listening to Accent on TV. Best of Poland and Europe. Right here on LA Talk Radio. Wow. This is show number five, I think. Accent on with Ilona Europa. Accent on the best of Poland and Europe with Ilona Europa and my co-host, Marek Bacik. Marek Bacik. Also, we have Lucy Hill, a wonderful, wonderful co-host, and we love her. She will be coming on a Monday, third Monday, and we'll see who she will bring to the studio with us. Anyway, oh, just love this face. I really like my show. I'm very happy to have one, and I'm so, so excited because guests that I'm bringing, I cannot be more proud of. Marek, what do you think? Uh, how proud we are? I'm really proud. This guest that we you have know, today really is like the best of Poland. You know, the good-looking guest. That's the whole point. Look oh, at this. I mean, I'll it's amazing. That. Look at Marek. Look at her. It's like, it's just, you know, come on. I'm just what else can we ask for? Karolina Field, you are gorgeous. Oh, thank you. You are beautiful. You are the best of Poland and Europe for sure. She is the on best of on. Poland. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now, I know, Marek, you want to say the same about Marek. Oh, no, Marek. Marek is come on. Marek. Marek. <laughs> like I say before, I'm going to get a man crush, <laughs> you know, for this lovely gentleman right there. Is uh, this not your second man crush? Uh, you know, but uh, I love men, we but I'm kind of <laughs> married, you know, so it's, you know, Hi, I got love for everybody, you know. He loves his wife and Christina, Definitely. you know. He's and joking. I love mine, Marek. Uh, that's uh, yes. Well, nothing we're going to do about it, you know. It's just the love, you the know, love, that's it. But and I love to share really my love to guys. We love beauty. That's it. That's what it is. Beauty is And you guys. You just represent those men over 50, so I'm so proud of you. Gosh, Marek, it's amazing. Over Marek 50? <laughs> you Again. know, I, was, I, I would lie, but Name I saw you, guest. you know, you on Wikipedia, it's right there. You can't write about I'm your age anymore. I'm not my age. Right, right. You should not, because you should be proud of it. Okay, Mr. Really. Marek, I'll never ask you for your, like, uh, who do you love in the studio the most, because then you really describe why yeah. you love you the person. To. I mean, look at this guy. I mean, the okay. style. The, Nobody the knows thing. who he is. I know well, people, a lot of people no. know. Polish people know. Polish people Polish. know. Americans people know, too. That's and right. In a way, That's before right. we need to introduce our guest, what is his name? Marek Probosz. Marek Probosz. Bardzo mi miło być w studio. Witam was, witam państwa i czekam na dalszy ciąg. <laughs> okay, we like to talk, <laughs> that's for będzie. sure. And uh, I will say, even when we have the most beautiful Polish uh, woman here next to me who yeah. will become my friend, I don't know why I feel this way, but I know I'm right. Uh, Karolina, you, I just met you. I just met you because our beautiful friend that we have... Uh, the same friend, Adam Abramek, who just a moment ago, we just finished Accent On um, on the radio, and we had Adam Abramek, who is a very, very known Polish American producer, uh, music producer. We met his son, Alan Abramek, and his beautiful daughter, Blanka Adamek, and they, these children are so educated, so gorgeous, we just will have them on the show, obvious. But he just brought you here, because he wrote to me at 12.30 at night, how funny. <laughs> he said, yeah, I will bring a very good friend of mine, Carolina Phil. I think you'll enjoy to hear her story. And I know that uh, Accent on, on Poland and Europe, the best of Poland and Europe, this is the show about people like both of you. In a way, uh, about me and Marek too, but really about our guest. And you represent strength of the woman, fight for what you want in I life. represent strength of the woman too. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing it proudly. Yeah, I know, you're doing proudly. What do you want? <laughs> and I know that your journey is a very, very unusual one. I know that Marek Probos is so successful in America, and uh, he was describing his journey, which we will repeat beautifully. Right now, we need to, we need to just uh, listen from his uh, mouth, and people can see how great looking guy he is and how dynamic he is and you know the way how he described what was his life in Poland like why did he leave Poland what he's doing right now we have a great life stories two great life stories mine too is maybe no it's a very cool life story mine too definitely Marechku, you love your life in I America I love my life I love myself first <laughs> let's put it this way then everybody around me and I That's think what is, is. Uh, and the way it should be yeah. I think what w I think this is a part of uh, Polish upbringing and Polish blood. We don't give up so easily, and we are a fighters. We are. Somebody told me once that I'm a push. I push always too hard. To me, I that's true. I always push myself 
harder than maybe somebody else. I think I have a reason for that. I think I have one life to live. I believe that if I want something, nobody will do for me. If I don't do harder, push harder, who will do it? You know, the good things that, oh, somebody discovered you, just said, oh, I will help you, doesn't exist until you path your own uh, road and how you call this you walk your own you earn it you, you, you need to earn you something you need to earn it you it's walk your tough. own path yes and, and america this is the um, beautiful country we love america we love europe we love poland but america is a tough country it's so many of us but really it's not because it's one of Ilona Europa, one That's of Marek right. Batik, for sure one of Marek Probosz. Really, really, we are so proud of your success in America. Thank and you. of course, Carolina, I'm so proud because you are representing strength of the woman. And again, we'll talk about your journey from $50 in your pocket 14 years ago when you left Poland into being pretty successful businesswoman. Okay. So when we talk about money, can I borrow 50 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> you want to start the same journey? That's right. We're we start the same woman. journey right now. You know, we see what's happening in 10 years from now. You know, you never know. Years. Yeah. Well. Okay. Even when I supposed to talk to uh, ladies first, I think we'll give Marek uh, time to maybe get us to journey from Poland into the time that you moved into America and you really start. Uh, oh, somebody's calling to me. <laughs> My daughter, hi Natasha, we're well, not talking to you right now. Uh, but we'll talk about your journey from Poland to America and then you know that it's always this one day then you feel you, you are making again, you are becoming who you wanted to be in this country. I know there was one day in, in America that I felt like, oh, it's possible, maybe something possible for me with my bad language in the beginning, not good accent, until this day I have bad accent, but I do the best with my bad accent, <laughs> or oh, good accent, cool accent, whatever. It's a cool accent. You know, it's, it's a, a cool Polish accent. accent. Yes, and, and I know now Americans love people with an accent. You don't have to, you have very elegant we uh, all, American we all accent. have accent let's let's face that's it right. strength yeah yeah okay Mareczko, that's the polish sweet uh, way of calling you never Marek. call me that what is this <laughs> we're kind of jealous <laughs> now <laughs> no. what is that uh, right, <laughs> you're so cute you know marek probosz uh, yes you're an actor you are a producer you're a director you're a teacher you are i don't even know if you can call this teacher because you are the ucla and you are teaching actors and filmmakers how to become who you are here in America. The and most importantly guy. today he's a dad. It's That's a right. Children's That's right. Day. Uh, so we should happy, honor our kids. Happy, happy children's day. Happy to children's our day kids to our babies. And to all the kids Sorry <laughs> Natasha, I'll call universe. you later. Yes. Anyway, uh okay, you take your own story into your own hands. Uh, you can start off how happy you are in real life. You can start about how really your life become to be successful in Poland many, many years ago. You just talk to us. You know, uh, the rich man is the happy man. And uh, I have to admit, I'm very rich. Hmm. I am very rich because I'm a happy man. The how, some people ask me, you should write a book about how you raise kids because you have wonderful kids. Well, it's not happening without really working on this. And it's the same with our life. We have to work hard. But we work out hard without realizing we are even working when we are following our passion, our heart. And since I was a kid, I never looked for who I wanted to be. People ask uh, kids or teenagers, who you do you want to be? And they say, I don't know, or they have some vague ideas. I knew who I was before I even really thought about it because I was six years old when I was already on stage uh, playing Jester in wow in The Princess and the Pea, uh, Christian Andersen's uh, fairy tale, and uh, my mom was teaching me lines. Uh, and it was a great success, the play was a success, and my mom kept the review from it, um, from the production, when they wrote about my performance. So without knowing how to read already, I instinctively followed the path, followed my, my passion, and then I tried everything else. I was very curious, and I never want to stop to be curious. I love to be curious because curiosity is creativity. Right. Uh, it's really discovery. That's how you discover who you are, and, and you and you discovering yourself. So um, I knew I'm an actor, and and that costume of a jester that I played uh, in my first show, I have a feeling it stayed with me. Who is Jester? In Polish tradition, Jester is somebody who is very wise and is being at the 
royal's court, right? He's there and he's the only one yeah. who is allowed to tell the king uh, what's wrong with him or that he is uh, mm. wronging others or he can always point the finger. Deliver bad news also? Yes, yes. That's bad, the very art. Yes, and he can even ridicule the king and, mm. and he's the only one who can do that. So um, that costume and that, that wisdom, that, that idea was always very close to my heart. Um, I continued my, my acting um, for seven years. I was in this theater group uh, since I was six years old. But in the meantime, I tried everything else, really. And uh, the only thing that sticked with me till the end was acting. And sport. I was very mm. passionate about sport. And sport is something that you have to have that spirit of an athlete. Fight. And, and you cannot. You. And you are not a sprinter. You know, it's you are not the man of one knockdown, one hit. That's not enough. Right. Tenacity in yes. this sport that, or in art, uh, you must be artisan. You must be somebody who does it, not talk about it, yes. but is do it. doing yeah. it. Right. And and every no brings you closer to yes. You never. You know, I, I tell I people it. very often that if I would be alone, I would give out a long time ago. Right, right. There's so many of me. You got to be supportive. I right? mean, there is a, there is a spiritual support. Right. There is there are so many heroes who lived here before me and passed on the torch, and my, I'm just picking it up and I'm channeling their spirit and their creativity through me. And um, we have only one life. And of course. And for a creative person to slip through your life is the worst what can happen to us. And like you said, you are so many, so many of you is in you anyway. When I was describing your role, I didn't, you need to tell us, but again, actor, filmmaker, director, producer, teacher, daddy, beautiful daddy, great husband, and husband of yeah. 25 years and I know how beautiful father you are. I saw your pictures on Facebook. I love Facebook. We really can <laughs> learn a lot about Glad people right, right away. But you cannot fake the pictures like that. Your children, I just adore you. I'm very proud of my of my family and my kids and I, and I live for them. I, I really, you know, it's, it's just people who didn't experience that. They don't know what they are missing. It's unbelievable. I was just That's a message for single people. Yes, it is. <laughs> I was recently right. thinking that actually I can count my, my years, uh, 10, 20, 30, and then my kids came. And then for some reason, I, I don't know what happened. 20 years are gone. Right. Because the spotlight, which was on you, suddenly needs to be turned Focus by you. Focus on somebody By else. you, on yeah. your own free will. Right. From you to them. Right. Absolutely. And that idea of sacrifice, which is willing sacrifice for others, Right, definitely. Y you know, in the contemporary world, we have there is a huge inflation of real heroes, because people are not willing to sacrifice. Yeah, they think and, about themselves, and they don't understand that without sacrificing, you cannot be filled and yeah. you cannot be feel happy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There's no happiness without that act of sacrifice. You cannot be really successful. Right. Yeah, and you are blessed because your children are very, very smart, artistic also. Like you said, your daughter, she has a beautiful name. Valentina and Vincent. So we figured Vivi? out this double V, v double V. And That's not right. only double V, it's also Victory. double T. Oh. Victory ah. and Valor. Oh. Uh, wow. It's T because we traveled. I love cultures, of course. So we, we were travelers with my wife, pre-kids we traveled a lot gosha gosha hi gosha again um, hi, hi nice gosha. to meet you we cannot <laughs> wait to talk to you i know that you're a pretty also gorgeous girl you have your own business and she's a yoga yoga master yoga yes master. and oh. reiki healer we wow. need your help i yeah, need, we need your help we need some reiki healers we need help. yes we really i just need, need a bra not a help <laughs> <laughs> that's it you don't need a that's help what i gosha. need i think you, you know but i got uh, just two questions for you yes do you still have the jester costume and you, can you still oh. fit in it? Interesting. That's, <laughs> why, that's because, you know. Do yes, you? I do. Really? I, yes, that's I awesome. Do. I do. I do. What, you know, people say, you go in this. Yeah, I know. But yeah, you, you go in that. You should frame it. I mean, that would and, be like awesome. And I say, I love things and people with right. character. Right, right. Definitely. You cannot be ashamed yeah. of who you are. Oh, no. That's the last thing. And, yeah. and that's the thing you should be proud of. And that's why for us being Polish and working in America is something to really be, be really proud of. Right. Uh, what are, what are uh, 
hard journey all of us have. We don't complain. I don't think so. We do. Mm, I think we're excited to see that we are doing big progress in our lives in a way. And your success, <laughs> success, success, as, as, <laughs> as so many of them, you just need to tell us. I, I was saying in the last uh, hour, listening how much you accomplished in a short time because it's a short time 10 15 years goes so we fast we should live 120 years at least I know. at least I'm and, and voting I'm like, for I'm it tired you got my vote <laughs> yeah time of listening how many things you you did in your life but the tire is good words in the situation please tell us you left poland in 1987 87 at the time when there tell was us still the story. Yeah, a, a, short a grim grim a communist regime and the Berlin Wall was standing very strong. So for me to leave uh, Poland at that time, when the really Warsaw was was uh, covered with the posters, I was just doing a one-actor show with Tomasz Stańko, who is the wow. oh, one of the most oh. famous uh, trumpet, trumpet players player. in Europe. Um, <coughs> it was based on the Czech um, writer's uh, poetry, Bohumil Hrabal. Um, and uh, it was a fantastic show and I got this offer to be in a film um, and I went to Hamburg it was it was in the West because Hamburg at that time was in the West right so I had to go from Warsaw to um, East Berlin from East Berlin to West Berlin from there to Hamburg I worked on the film and the violin stopped playing was the title of the film and I was introduced to the director, artistic director of American Cinema Tech, Gary Essert. And Gary Essert said, no, you don't have to introduce him to me. I know him. I know his work. It happened to be that he'd seen three movies which were awarded at the International Film Festivals, at Cannes Film Festival, at the uh, San Sebastian Film Festival, at Carlo Vivari Film Festival. And he said, Marek, would you mind if I invite you to Hollywood for three weeks for the panels with American, and not only the, the filmmakers from around the world, and we don't have anybody from Eastern Europe, but it would be an honor to have you. <laughs> I just <laughs> looked at him. What a joker. <laughs> I thought I'm funny. It was impossible to go to the United right. States and at that time. And people do not understand what was 1987 yeah. in Poland. Yeah. It's like uh, you say, oh, you got invitation. Everybody was like, oh, I'm humping on an on right, on 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 airplane. Boop, right. passport. No. Oh, oh, no. oh no. no, in Poland. Everything. Everybody says, no, 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 no. We were blessed because we are artists and we still were allowed to travel. I was traveling all around Europe, but the certain countries, it was tougher to get a Absolutely. visa. Tell us what's happened. Uh, well, uh, I was invited, I, I was recommended to go to the, to the embassy, American embassy, to get my visa. So I went and the answer was no. It was a very quick answer. They didn't even talk much to me. They said, no, no, you are not <laughs> going to get it. Goodbye. There's no, we had, there's nothing to talk about. So I went back to the hotel and Gary Esser called me and he said, did you get it? <laughs> I said, no, I didn't. He said, oh, that's impossible. I mean, there's some kind of a mistake. It was an in, in official invitation. I remember it was specifically written that medical, everything was right. covered, not only ticket and every and a hotel, but even the dentist. And in case I had uh, people from Eastern Europe at that time, they had, they that's were famous, bad <laughs> teeth, very bad teeth. So even dentist was covered. Uh, so he said, I, I'm, I apologize, please go tomorrow and, and I'll talk to them and it shouldn't be a problem, it's a mistake. I went next day and the same answer, no. We are not talking. Go. We have next client. Go. No. <laughs> so I went yeah, back future, to the hotel. Uh, it was darker and darker. I said, OK, my dream of going for three weeks to America. That's uh -uh. right. So it's I went back. Happening. The, the phone rang and, and I picked it up and Gary was saying, you have it, right? I said, <laughs> no. And he said, listen, I, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, I'm going to talk to consul and I'll call you back. So he called consul. He called me back and he said, absolutely, go to consul. He's waiting for you. Everything is taken care of. I know you are flying back home in, in a couple of days, so it's taken care of. Just go and tomorrow, please, you'll get it. So I went and I see the familiar face, the same gentleman <laughs> is approaching. I'm saying, uh -uh, I'm not going to talk to you. I want to talk to consul only. <laughs> And he smirked at me and said, I am the consul. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, listen, young man, I know you'll never come back from America. You are too young, too handsome, too talented, because otherwise they wouldn't invite you and wouldn't pay right. for it. Right. Uh, so I, I cannot give it to you because you'll stay, right? So I said, no, I'm booked for three years. He said, listen, don't talk to me here through this window anymore. I talked to Gary. He asked me to talk to you like civilized man so come to my office 
if you are such a good actor, mm. I'll sign it with my own Parker, you know, gold Parker, and uh -huh. I lick it with my own saliva, because visas at that time were big, like right, passports. Right. Um, they were not stamps like today. <laughs> so uh, we got inside his office, and he asked his secretary to make us a coffee, and I started to talk, and half an hour later, I saw his big pink tongue licking the visa and signing it with the gold Parker three weeks only in Hollywood. Wow. I still have that, that passport. Wow. Um, he gave it to me and he was right. Mm -hmm. I left without knowing that I'm going to stay in right. America. But once I came here, I decided to stay and not to come back. And the reason being was that I realized that in life there are more important things than career success, fame, which I had in Poland and Eastern Europe at the time. I had fun clubs. I played on lead parts in the theater, film, television. I started to direct successfully in theater abroad and I was offered new new roles booked for three years and uh, when I came here three weeks later the three weeks, three weeks were fantastic I went in, I was invited to Exciting. film studios I had translator there was limos and everything was shocking to me of right, course right. because today we have computers uh, cell phones we can call home at that time it was one way ticket that's it nobody knew that Berlin Wall is going to go oh, down yeah, yeah. that the regime is going to change so uh, after the initial shock, when the three weeks were gone and my ticket was calling me to go to the airport and go back to Warsaw, I decided not to go. I decided to stay because I felt in my heart that I'm being limited uh, and I, I, that I'm, I'm not free. And the biggest enemy of human being, human spirit, is lack of freedom. And I cannot exist if I, if I don't feel free. So. I decided to stay. I went to UCLA immediately to learn language because my English was very poor. And after taking a couple of weeks of classes, I spoke to the professor and I said, what would you do if you would have what I have in my country and you would be in a situation and you would need to make this life decision? And he said very simply, um, what is the most important thing in life to you? And I said, love and freedom. And he said, well, Come on, I mean, love, you'll find, <laughs> get <it. laughs> you'll get that. But freedom, do you have it in Poland? And I said, no, he right. said, you answered yourself. So that was the crucial moment in my life. I decided to stay. I worked my ass off to really keep climbing, not only with the skills of my language, but with other skills as well. I started to write. I co-wrote a couple of screenplays. Then um, I got my first role in a TV series called how to survive in Hollywood, which gave me Screen Actors Guild card, which is, which is you become yeah. the member of the of the filmmaking community. You can work. So I got an agent, and uh, the rest is history. I started to get roles on TV series, Jack, Numbers, Monk, uh, you name it, uh, many more. I got uh, offers to be in feature films. I was in the feature film Love Affair, which was a remake of uh, Affair to Remember. Uh, with Catherine Hepburn, oh with, with, wow, with amazing, uh, yeah. Warren I Beatty, mm -hmm. um, with Paul Mazursky. And we are talking about you being in Hollywood, straight from Poland, with being very, very known actor there, very successful, then coming to America, understanding that your language is not perfect, your accent is pretty heavy, you are in a place that really nobody can help you on if you don't help yourself and america is like yeah yeah doesn't really matter who you were tell me who you are Absolutely. right now and it's always today and next what is the next which what drives artists like us to not stay in one place because you understand that minute later you are already past <coughs> and especially for when it comes to creative people and and obvious having like you mentioned uh, being surrounded by the biggest name the most talented people then now slowly you were part of their journey this must be amazing it was amazing it was amazing i remember my agent called me on sunday and he said marek uh, there is a rehearsal at uh, columbia studios right right um and they would like you to be there and i said you must be kidding on sunday <laughs> I mean, how much do they pay? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's and he said, no, 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 <laughs> nobody's being paid. I, I said, no, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, <laughs> reason it for me. I mean, why should I go? Right. And he said, because Warren Beatty is going to be there. Oh, yeah. Annette Bening oh, is going oh, to be there. Wow. Paul Mazursky is going to be there. They said that even maybe Catherine is going to show up, um, uh, Hepburn. And he said, uh, Conrad Hall, who was the director of photography, Amazing, yeah. is going to be there. And they are just rehearsing 
so, yeah. those Academy Awards many times winners, they are rehearsing what a respect for your profession. Wow. They are rehearsing for the Monday shoot. Wow. So they decided to rehearse for nothing just yeah, just yeah, out Sunday. of their free time to get even better. Right, I right. love that about my profession. I love how much respect uh, there is in America. Once you work, once you work, you are being respected like a king. And, and there's a lot, of course, of, of fame and, and, you know, BS, as we say here. Right, right. But really, when you work, you are respected and treated like the best of the best. And I love that about America, about our profession, because there's so much risk being involved. As you said, you're only as good as your last picture, right, as your last it. work. So, yes, I worked on many uh, projects, uh, but there were a few turning points, like that one, with, with the quality, the top, creme de la Top creme much, right. you and you, you see how it. they work yeah. and and then i remember i was offered to work uh, to audition to audition for karate kid 3 mm -hmm. and that was the open call for the in, in the entire country and i was in chicago at that time because i co-wrote the screenplay about father jerzy popiewuszko the polish solidarity priest right. and i was supposed to play father jerzy popiewuszko mm -hmm. and and i knew the whole script by heart um so i was ready with all my monologues and we came to Chicago where we were promised to get some money to shoot the film, but we never got the money. Yeah. And the time was ticking, the clock was ticking, and we ran out of money. So we were out of basically you know, s resources to live. Right. So I started to look for work. So I went to two best agencies in Chicago, Geddes Agency and A Plus Agency, and they both wanted to sign me because they saw how desperate I was. <laughs> and, uh, and they liked that, and I was so ready with my monologues right. from the script. They and I said, no, 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 I'm not going to sign with you guys, and I'm not going to sign with you. Whoever gives me work first, I'm going to sign with them, because I need to work. Yeah, I idea. just really, really hope that, uh, that uh, this show, The Best of Poland and Europe, uh, will change uh, also people's per uh, perception right. of uh, who immigrants uh, are uh, in America. It's not only about Poland and Europe, because from time to time we have people outside right, of Poland, outside Europe, they are part. Uh, yes. We have from India, a beautiful lady, uh, also you know, very successful uh, um, woman. And then we'll be inviting a lot of people here, because what means we're the best of countries, in these countries also be the best of USA. And you know, uh, then I'm hoping people will be watching uh, this TV because this is like almost Bible for how to not be afraid of yourself and just take a chance. Americans, I think they have a little bit easier than we have. They are born here, but in a way, in a not bad way, not calling, but they're a little bit lazy sometimes. Spoil. And uh, you know, spoil I'm out, coaching a lot of talented uh, singers in my own home studio. Then we are recording. We are, you know, creating songs for them. And uh, sometimes I see the difference between American culture and little people who are uh, children from uh, outsiders, uh, whatever we call this. The children just work harder. You know, if the mommy comes from just another country, hungry. they just, uh, just yeah, r the, the respect for the work. And okay, Sunday, no problem. I'm coming there. I will be practicing. What do I need to do? Or not? Uh, why today? You know, then. Please watch this uh, show and listen to uh, Marek Probosz. I know you are talking to young students. I know they probably love you because you have this backup story uh, that really backs up what you are right <laughs> now. And uh, everybody loves to hear that you can hit the, I don't want to say bottom, but in a way you started from zero and then you move forward so fast. I'll come back to, uh, to you because we have this beautiful lady with us and I know that the success story never ends with you. And I know that's mm -hmm. your life. That's the guy who you are and you'll be always pushing in a good way because there's so much to do in this uh, beautiful uh, profession. I know also Carolina feel again that in a way you are a very creative person. You wanted to be a filmmaker? I, I study film uh, in university in Lublin. Uh, I actually wanted to be an actress. It's so typical, right? And, um, and I, I think those I dreams... Think, look at you. Yeah, yeah, she should be an actress. Well, um... <laughs> If not, we you. can shoot some little movie. That's <laughs> 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 we we got yeah, we got a camera right now. Right? Go on, there I you actually go. have my IMDb little profile, so <laughs> I, uh, I, I did the little movie. Oh, but um, okay, we want to hear a little bit here uh, <laughs> in Poland or in America. Uh, no, actually in America. A few years ago, okay. it was a, a independent movie called uh, uh, Pursuit of Loneliness, and uh, I played a little part there, and it was featured in Sundance, and I think uh, it won some nice awards. So, oh. but. Um, 
kind of going to the dreams, and I'm so inspired by what Mark said. Oh. I, I, I mean, it, it somehow kind of you know translates to what I've I was going through, uh, uh, taking risk, you know, believing in yourself first of all, having your dreams, and I think that's the key to any success. It kind of you know starts as a dream, and you have to believe in it. You have to believe in yourself. When I came here, I came here for a month. Like, like Mark almost uh, um, I had a ticket back to Poland and um, I didn't make it Did you uh, on the to plane. Chicago? Did uh, you know, I actually, my, my story is uh, long, but I, I'm going to keep it very short. <laughs> no, I, I just, have time. I, I, I came for a month. Uh, Poland was just too, you know, too 40 small. Years too ago. 40 14 years, years ago. 14 years ago. It was Which right there after. after uh, don't, don't. <laughs> it was after solidarity. Yeah. Right, right, it was right. after that's solidarity. Yeah. Yeah, Whoever knows the time and period strike. <laughs> I guess. So yeah. it was after solidarity. But uh, so it was better times that um, when Mark left, but still not good enough to um, achieve what you really wanted to achieve. Yeah. And and I think, you know, Lublin was the city that I grew up in and was born. Poland was too small, was always too small for me. I remember my friends in the high school were saying the biggest <laughs> dream is to get married, have two kids. Uh, a two bedroom apartment and a car and that was it and when i was telling people i want to go to america i want to you know i want to be someone i want to do something i want to be able to you know have an impact on on on, on life or, or so they were looking at me like okay yeah another crazy story um <laughs> and i proved them wrong uh, right, but uh, yeah when i came here it was just for a month kind of take my mind off of things um change the pace in poland and after a month, uh, it was my birthday on April 10th. I was in Arkansas, where Fayetteville, wow. town of Arkansas, where my friend lived. <laughs> and I told him, uh, I'm going to Los Angeles uh, on my birthday. I'm not getting gifts. No one's here to wish me happy birthday. My family is all in Poland. So I'm giving myself a gift uh, to uh, buy a Greyhound ticket, 43 hours. Uh, on a bus, wow. come to LA, a lady wow. like that. completely, uh, oh, I had wow. like $150, I think, $126 was my ticket, okay, I still have it. Now you're scaring me, That's girls yeah. above 18 do not listen to her, because I don't know if I will let my daughter, <laughs> even right, in America, no like, way. Okay. on I a greyhound, uh, uh, yeah. you did it, girl. I, I would, if I would have had a daughter, I would just kill her before yeah. I would have <laughs> to go to Poland, just to clarify it, my I mom know. did not know even, okay. no one knew that I got on a bus, so my... Mom called me and to wish me happy birthday. My friend answered, and, and she's like, he she's on the you know way to Los Angeles. And first she was happy until she saw on the map the distance between oh. Arkansas and, and California. And <laughs> then she was like, okay. And she hasn't heard from me. She didn't hear from me for a few days until I called her. You know, one of those calling cards and no FaceTime, no Skype at that time. <laughs> um, so it was yeah. So it was like one way ticket for me. It was for Mark. A little bit different circumstances, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I had supposed to. I flew to Chicago from Chicago to Arkansas. Then, when I took a bus from Arkansas to Los Angeles, um, I was supposed to fly back uh, April 19 from Chicago back to Warsaw, and that was my ticket. And when I came here, it was like a decision. There was just one way. I had about nearly thirty dollars left in the pocket after I spent my money on the ticket. I did not know anyone. I did not have a job. Wow. I did not have place to stay. So, um, so in any way, uh, it all turned out well. Um, I worked my ass off. Yeah. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> I worked so six days a week. It's official. You guys both have no asses by now. Yes. <laughs> it's official. Don't it's stand all up. left on the floor. Do not yeah. stand up. Just sit down. <laughs> I'm trying to work it back with my trainer, but it's hard. Okay, gotcha. It's a hard task. But uh, yeah, six we days a week, 12 others. Yeah. That's it. I don't have to Gosh, ask. Uh, yeah, gotcha for some advice. Grow some ass back. <laughs> oh, grow some ass, please. <laughs> then, okay, so that's uh, petrifying. Uh, it's so sweet. And I, I know because you're a fighter, then probably you live, uh, you live there day to day and you just didn't question so much why you make decisions because you knew you need to make them and not question them. I didn't even for a second. People ask me, like, w w are you crazy? You got on a bus. You didn't have money. You didn't know, you know, what's going to happen. That is crazy. Things happen. I mean, someone could have, you know, sliced you in pieces and they would find the body in, in a dumpster a month later. Like, who, who's going to claim it? The thing is that I I did not even think for a second anything bad. I was so positive. And, and on all the way, something happened when I came here. I had some uh, a run with uh, uh, someone kind of... Uh, uh, beat me up so to speak and I had all the police and so but um and I remember I was sitting on the beach in Santa Monica and and I was looking at the ocean and I had no place to stay I had no money I had no wow. uh, uh work I had my family is all back in Poland okay, I, I cannot already. I, I cannot go back I, I can't even call them cry here 
<laughs> but the, the, the craziest thing, sitting on this beach, uh, being in the place where I dreamt to be, and feeling the, the biggest happiness that I felt in my life, being jobless, wow. being homeless, uh, leaving my family back, that they're expecting me in a few days at the airport in Warsaw, and, and I'm just so happy. That's uh, amazing. Uh, it, and I'm I so mean, positive and still thinking, I'm gonna make it. I don't care what happened, I will make it, I know I'm gonna make it, and, and uh, just life is Did beautiful. Did you speak English? Uh, uh, Berlin. I, I, yeah, I, I understood more, yeah. I mean, you know, in Poland they teach you, but I didn't really, yeah, I didn't would speak you, well. Would Same you do anything me. different? Yeah. I, I would have come earlier. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, that's, that's good. That's a beautiful That's amazing. Okay. And the other question is, do you know who beat you up? Because we can. Uh, yeah, yeah, now I we trust can. Yeah. If I would, I would probably beat me him up Me and Marek probably, you know, we can do something about <laughs> it now. <laughs> Again, you. I know you will be back because uh, I think I found another friend who I know will be on my show. And oh, we both you. are in the same profession uh, to help older people just have a beautiful nice places uh, to live, enjoy the older age. I am petrified of getting older in a way in America. No. I would be more petrified to be in, 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 in Poland. Poland right? we, we have a friend. Yeah, yeah. Now we have a friend. Of course, she's younger than one, us. One yeah. empty bed somewhere yeah, for we'll us. Hook you up. <laughs> but you know, I lost uh, recently my mom, and she was in a special place, a private place in a ha home house uh, with few people, older people also. And I thought that's the best what I, I can offer to my mommy. I, I made a few mistakes, for sure, a few mistakes, because the choices uh, that you make can make the. Uh, old age miserable because my mom was uh, uh, also having Alzheimer and dementia she couldn't speak out for herself and in a way um, the trust that you uh, uh, need to put into somebody else's hands to take care of uh, your loved ones oh, is a big word you know the trust somebody tr to trust and oh, yeah. to not being in Poland being in America and overlook and only flying once or twice and just seeing how mom, mama is doing Ma mom was doing worse and worse. I couldn't do anything about it. My s life situation was just so horrible. Three years ago, everything happened in one time. My mother was dying, my marriage fell apart, I had no money, no nothing, and I needed to pick up myself from zero, completely, or I will say minus a lot of, lot of thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Minus. What he left you then, with. Then, uh, <laughs> you know, then it was really bad, and yeah. I did the best that I could, and I thought my mom is in a good place. But I don't think so. She was really, um, even when I paid a lot of money. How did you get to this point that that's what is your profession right now, to take care of the older? I, it was just a uh, uh, kind of accident. Uh, I met someone along my journey and looking for a job that um, own one of um, uh, uh, these assisted livings. And I started from the bottom up, you know, started in a kitchen six days a week, 12 hours. And wow. slowly, I think, um, you know, I really worked uh, very hard in the evening after 12 hour shift, I still would go upstairs, I'd get my dictionary, you know, read some newspapers, just trying to practice English and, and get better very, very quick. And um, I took my uh, classes, I, I did, did my test um, to become an administrator. You have to be a licensed administrator to work in one of those places. And, and I surprised, I think, a lot of people. And um, throughout my, hard work, I think I was recognized and, and giving more opportunity that led me to now partner up with um, uh, this person and, and get my facilities as well. So uh, it was just an accident, but I always say that the dream made me come here, but in some crazy twisted way, the fate put me uh, uh, on a path of working with seniors. But if I didn't have that dream of coming to Hollywood, I would have never made no, it here. So no. I think it, that's what I said. It starts from the dream. And sometimes it leads you in a different ways that you originally thought of, but just embrace it because, you know, God works in the mysterious ways and he had yes. some other plans for me and I'm embracing it. Again, I it. love older people. I really am one of uh, those yeah, that I could talk for hours and, and I have so We many will be ideas. one, so we would better yes. have respect yeah, how to I'm make our life cool there. in an old age. <laughs> I know Marek uh, probably will never get old. No, he's, he's just young. Yeah. Look I'm still calling Kelvin Klein. Please call him. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, future designers, please Fusion. start design for uh, guys uh, 
40, over 50s. Uh, don't over don't like we don't like here about age. That look like no. Marek because I think that's so. <laughs> that's hey, you're making me look bad here. Okay, yeah. come on. I want to look like Carolina. It's just the camera. I'll and yeah. and uh, you want to look like Marek? Uh, you know, I'm not uh, Marek telling you the truth. His name. Telling you the truth. I'm happy how I look like. Of course, that's okay. the most. That is that is the I know you know right. That's the key. I'm always happy with that. Yeah, and yes, and you see, you no, you can rub my stomach for luck. Not you. But Mar you know, Mar like we say, don't yeah. judge the book by the cover. I will figure when I see you first time mm -hmm. yes. that you will hang everything on a silver platter. Yeah, I know. Oh, literally. Well, really? Literally. Because, yeah. you know, you're a beautiful you woman. Words. You're very smart. And you figure, you know, you can, you really don't have to work with your hands. Yeah. You oh, know what I I'm saying? I worked my But after, butter. listen, that's what I'm saying. Don't judge the book by your cover because. Beautiful stories. You, it's amazing it's stories. Uh, Marek, I know we, we never really talk about us too much. Uh, yeah, we, one of those days. One of those days. You well, also are interview. very successful yeah. uh, entrepreneur. And I, I just love how you think and how you operate and how you take care of your own family. And I you know how to. much you are loved uh, by your two children and your wife. You are just very special man. But it's not about us. That's right. It's yeah. about I them. Am very about those two beautiful perfect people. Perfect woman, too. Marek, we have again uh, nine minutes. Right, and it drives me crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, crazy. Time goes I'm fast when you're having fun. Yeah, I, <laughs> I want to know if we can uh, talk. What is Marek today? I let you go maybe three, four years, uh, you know, back. But today, so much happening in your life. You are going to Chicago. You have a new movie. You have just tell us about this. We need to know that. Uh, it's it's. it's somebody who does so many things at the same time sometimes I, I don't know even how is it happening you know it's absurd absurd really uh, but you you must be open and if you open if you just follow your heart not your head but your heart really i mean things start to happen right there's a very wise saying that if the legends are over and dreams end there's no place for right. greatness no. that's awesome. so um when you work out of love, if you understand that this is a marathon run, this is not a sprint, that is, there is loneliness of the lo long distance runner is being involved, and you, have, and you have your goal, things are happening, and God never shuts the door without opening another door. Um, I'm going to Chicago for the third time this year. I've been there um, in the beginning, in spring, with the movie The Death of Captain Pilecki, which was movie. shown. It, it is an amazing film. Amazing, yes. Uh, I'm traveling with this film, actually, for 10 years now, around wow. the world. Every single year, I'm somewhere else with this film. Because there is a demand for real heroes. Right. And if you would put the story of Witold Pilecki into one feature film, he would beat all the double... Could you tell us a little bit who was this? He was the only man who, during the Second World War, voluntarily went to Auschwitz right. under a different name, of course, to organize underground in Auschwitz between the inmates, bring them hope, to establish the link with the outside world and to let the outside world know about the atrocities which are happening within right. Auschwitz. Of course, he was just one of the inmates, so he could die 100 times every single day, like everybody else. Right. And uh, his story is unbelievable. I, you know, American publisher, Akila Polonica, uh, after the movie came out and was very successful, including America, won some awards in the United States as well. Uh, I'm playing Witold Pilecki. I became his ambassador. I'm traveling with this film. And basically, when the movie's over, people meet with me. And it's like Pilecki stepping down from the screen, and now they can talk right. to him. So I'm being invited with the film. Um, the movie was shown in White House. Uh, President Bush watched it with his entourage, wow. uh, between other places where I traveled to Sweden, England, and many other places. Got some medals in Auschwitz, you know, in Oświęcim for what I'm doing with Pilecki and, and uh, in London as well. But this movie is about the true hero who was, he knew what sacrifice is. He had some ideals and he lived them. And he, when, when, you, when you read his story, like I said, when the book was published in the United States, it's called The Auschwitz Volunteer Beyond Bravery, right. Captain Witold Pilecki. This movie was published in 2012, and it won um, the best pros in the United States. Oh. These are reports from Auschwitz, f which for three years Pilecki was sending um, to the outside world, begging, asking, demanding the Allies to do something about Auschwitz, because at the peak 
of his imprisonment there, there were 10,000 people being killed a day wow. in Auschwitz. Yes, yeah. And Allies did nothing. Six absolutely million Jews? Well, Was in general, it? during the Second right. World War, but one million yeah. point one people were killed in it's Auschwitz. Ten thousand people, crazy. all yes. around the world. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Um, so Pilecki escaped three years later because nothing was done successfully with two other inmates and he went to his underground in Warsaw and he was convincing them that they must attack oh, Auschwitz or convince allies to drop some weapons that he organized. 1,500 inmates were ready to liberate Auschwitz from inside if the weapon would be dropped or if the order would come, do something about liberating right. yourself, but it never happened. So Pilecki later became uh, the leader uh, of the Warsaw Uprising. He, his, his platoon was the last one, Chrobry II, in the center of Warsaw, which was taken over by, by Nazis and under, again, a different name, of course. They didn't know it's Pilecki. He was taken to another German concentration camp where he uh, um, stayed till the liberation. Uh, and then he was taken, uh, he, they wanted to take him back to Poland, but he said, no, Poland, the, the war is not over. I'm going to Italy, to General Anders, another right. huge Polish hero. Anders knew it's a legendary man, and he said, I want you to be my right hand. Pilecki said, no, I'm going back to Poland to fight with Soviets now. He said, you can't go because you'll be arrested and killed. He said, I've been in Auschwitz where they yeah. were killing 10,000 right. people a yeah, day. They, yeah. I'm well, going. Right. So he went and he started no underground organization in Poland for one year. He was using microfilms and, and codes, and he was sending information, intelligentsia, to allies abroad to the free Polish government outside of the communist Poland. And a year later, he was arrested. He was tortured for one year at the Rakowicka, Rakowiecka mm. prison Jesus. in Warsaw uh, in the most vicious way to the extent that Pilecki even said that in comparison, Auschwitz <sighs> was Nothing. a joke wow. to what they were doing to him. In, uh, in, in Rakowiecka. And a year later, when they couldn't break his spirit, they decided to make a show trial during which he was uh, accused uh, of being a traitor of Poland and executed with a single shot to the back of his head, uh, given to dogs to be eaten or burned in the oven right there at Rakowiecka. Still amazing. today, nobody knows where his body is. But in 1990, when the Berlin Wall went down, Pilecki's wife went to the president, went to, to people announcing that she wants Polish nation to know about her husband, what he'd done, because he was erased completely right. from all the history books. Communists said never ever anybody's going to know about this man. So in America, that, that's Poland. Since then, eight years later, we made the movie. This movie made for $250,000 in 10 days. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. Marek, yeah. Marek, one more time, could you tell us the title of the movie? How people can... The Death of Captain Pilecki. And I wanted to say that uh, audible.com, Brilliance, recorded the audiobook, oh, okay. 10 yeah. hours, where oh. there are reports, and they picked me to be the narrator. Oh. I'm Pilecki, I'm reading for 10 hours this book. We got fantastic reviews from the Washington Post. And it's really an eight a year journey, yes? Eight oh. for you is how many years the uh, movie went? Ten years ago? And, and eight, for ten years I'm traveling with the film yes. around the world. And I'm going now to the International Chi Film Festival in Chicago. It's amazing. Eyes on the World, where there are the best movies from every country. Not everybody, there's like 15 films chosen. And from Poland. Ten years later, the death of Captain Pilecki is being sh chosen to this festival. And I'm, wow. I'm flying. Wow. No, I saw we the movie and it's amazing. I mean, I literally cry. We have one That's only minute. I know, I know. So, but we should, you know, we should invite him for the you know, a few weeks from now, yeah. see what happens. After she continue the story, we'll continue and we should probably start writing a little book about the success story of Polish people. I think, I think we are very yeah. proud to be Polish people because in you know, just, I, I mean, think we are doing we'll good job. You know, a few hundred of them and just put a whole story <laughs> so you don't feel alone. You know, uh, I don't so know what awesome. we'll do. This is only f fifth show, um, and I'm hoping for many, many more. Oh yeah, very definitely, interesting most definitely, people. Most I definitely. know, Marek, you need to come back, Marek Probosz. Everybody Thank who you. wants to see and know more about Marek, please go to. I just want to see Marek. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> but I, I, I post a link on uh, Accent On and Accent On the Best of Poland and Europe. I know we'll be back, and when it comes to Carolina, Phil. Also, I post your private link on Facebook, but I don't know, maybe people would like to know a little bit more uh, what you are representing and, uh, you know, find your place and just talk to you about what to do with their parents uh, if Absolutely, the time comes. Right, and Thank you guys for coming into our show. 
Thank you both for of you. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Um, accent on the best of Poland and Europe, and by host Ilona Europa and Marek, uh, Marek Bacic, and our beautiful, wonderful, talented, and we are so proud to have them today, Marek Probosz and Karolina Fiel. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. You're listening to Accent on TV. Best of Poland and Europe, right here on LA Talk Radio.